There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of savat. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to work. This week is starting off good. It's Monday again, and we have uh, questions and answers, and it's been taken off tremendously. We've been getting many questions to answer through, uh, through our email, and our email is withdrawnacademy2012 at gmail.com. Send a question. We'll go forward and we'll answer it. And one of the questions people always ask about certain professors, certain living legends, legends that are alive right now, and today we're going to start off with Professor Robert Paturel. Now, Robert Paturel gets home. He's very dear to me. He's my professor. I have known Patu, as we call him, uh, since I was 18 years old. Um, we met in Los Angeles when my father had talked to the yard and those in, in California to bring down and kind of bring some out here. the United States and, and try to uplift of Savat in, in the States. And this was back in 88. And um, well, as, as time progressed, you know, he came back again on the second time. And at that time, I was already graduating school. And, um, you know, I remember that, that that week because it was spring break, you know, I was going to graduate in May. And he goes, oh, you have to go travel in France. And I said, ah, how can I go travel in France? You know, how can just a college kid, uh, it will be a dream, right? And um, during that seminar, we got very close on, on the, you know, the second time he came back. And um, we were, everybody was sparring and so on and so forth. I remember somebody falling and falling on my knee sideways, you know, and I remember all the, all the guys over at the Masano Academy were very terrified because they thought that my knee had gone bonkers, right? And they brought me ice and so on and so forth. And I remember Patrell said, okay, well, you guys, you know, put on the gloves. I'm going to go around with each one. And all these Jeet Kune Do greats that were there, everybody that I had admired and still admire for their, for their work, you know, he put the gloves on them. And he put the gloves on them and they sparred. You know, they did asshole. And it was like seeing somebody from professional football play against somebody in junior high, high school, football team. There was no comparison. There was no comparison in movement. There was no comparison in agility. Um, I remember one time, a very nice a, a fellow from Japan, he was teaching shoot boxing there, I forget his name. Um, very, very well mannered, very good guy, good technique. He was with Paturel. He turned around, he was a champion of shoot boxing. In Japan, he turned around. It was the only one that was kind of pouring up, and he, he turned around and gave a spinning sort of uh, reverse, and but he just disappeared and comes back smiling like you know the way you always see him in the ring and, and in school, and it was just amazing to see you know as a student watching what was going on, paying attention. Well, later on when I graduated, I received a letter, or received a letter from the French Federation that uh, I've been chosen to have a full scholarship or something, you know, at instant. And I took a chance and I left. And Paturel became my professor. I've had others. And I say this with, with great pride. There's three men that taught me how to fight. One was my uncle, Isidro Chapa. The other one was Sifu Kitsi. And the other ones is Professor Robert Butler. These are the ones that taught me how to fight. Now, I've had many others. You know, I had a, uh, my trainer, Richard Sina, Professor Viviani, Lafon, Michel Gilbert, other professors at 
that touch my, the, the sabbat that I, that I produce now and moving forward dramatically. But the ones that, the ones, the three that taught me to fight, the one where I'm talking about right now is Robert Patrick. Now, how was he as a professor? Paturel was very straightforward. There was no, uh, there was no playing around with techniques. There was everything was serious. Everything was done. But even though he had a banter to him, it was always laughing. I was always joking around. Um, he made sure that you understood what he was trying to project to teach. Okay. You have to remember that Paturel comes from Savat. His professor was Richard Genado. His professor before him was uh, uh, Prevost. And, and, uh, um, the, and the one before him was Hakwin. And it goes down, down, down that line, on the Savat line. So they were very, very well in Savat. Folks that were with me at that school that were professors was Professor, professor Female Denny Roca great champion, um, Professor Dominic Dacloyerbe, great champion, probably one of the most uh, precise and noble, noble fighters be, besides uh, Francois Pinacchio that they move and uh, the respect is there when, when you're sparring, there's no, everything's done right. And everything's done right when you put the gloves with them. Um, and of course, myself and Professor Mark Senni, and, of, and Richard Seal, of course, were, but Richard Seal was already a, away from, from Real Madrid, from Real And um, so in that school, that's what we had. I remember very well the techniques that he would use. He would teach it as a progression. He would give you several enchantments and reposts. And for you to understand, for example, if you're doing a chasse lateral, that a chasse lateral was going to be the one that you can produce. And everything around that lesson that he taught was around the chassis and that's that for you to at least be able to perform it towards the end or a swing or an escape to a swing or a, and that continued moving forward. Now, I remember one time, one class, you have to understand that as I was training with him, I was also training with others and I was also going to school to become a teacher, you know, and when you become a, prof a professor, and so about every, there's a lot of books that says about everything was very fine tuned. You had to do everything by the book codified. And there was a technique that he was doing. He was demonstrating, I guess, what I could say is what I took from him was foot placement and footwork. He was the one that described the difference between the foot placement of Savat and the footwork of Bok He was the one that told me and made me see it for me to be understand it and for me to develop in the future, which I'm very grateful. But we're doing something about foot placement. And it was against a fuerte bar to the leg, rear leg, fuerte to the leg. And as you, as you pivot, as you move, you pivot in such a way that the person would hit his uh, shin on your knee. And I questioned you know, and I said, isn't that not allowed in the ring? And he kind of stopped and he says, comes over, you know, and everybody continued, comes over and he goes, let me explain to you something that I want you to understand. I'm not only teaching you for the ring, you're also learning for the street. That opened my eyes. He goes, everything I teach you is both for the ring and for the street. Now, I have to teach you both the good and the bad. So when you see the bad techniques or bad intended techniques performed to you, you can, you can counter them better. And that changed my whole mentality about my approach in learning savant and teaching savant and so on and so forth. You know, so that... He was a sage in that, in that, in that you know, and um, in 93, I remember, we're in Dallas, I remember I would go and it was a collegiate year, you know, my semesters I'll spend over there in the summer's year. So we, 
we're doing a seminar in Dallas and it says, you know, you're going to fight for the world title, for the world championship in 93. I said, okay. He pulls out a paper and he starts, you know, he goes, but I need to find out and see if you you can handle it. Yes, you, you've been in the ring and so on and so forth, but I want to find out, see if you can actually take it. And he says, you and I are going to put on the gloves and we're going to go round after round, but we're going to hit a little bit harder than before. I'm going to hit you. Is it sure? So we put on the gloves. I remember coming out of there with a, with a, with a shiner. And I, gave, I remember delivering an overhead with him. And he said, okay, stop. It was about the sixth round. It stopped. Sat down. Got out paperwork. Full, open full, full. And he started signing up. And he said, you know, Paul is the one that's going to go to represent the United States. This, blah, 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 blah. That's the way it's going to be. And uh, all of a sudden, he sent it off to France. You know, I remember him talking to Michel Roger at the time, who was the president of uh, the International Federation, vice president of the International Federation. And um, and when they were talking, and was going to be the one. And I remember in August, so the fight, the first fight I was fighting was September 17th. So I was going to go back over the first of August to start training for me to be ready. And uh, he calls me right days before I leave, and he tells me, how come you send a letter with the guys from California? You're not going to fight. I said, I never sent a letter. So time went in there, and we went looking for who sent the letter. I remember getting there the first, right after the airport. I thought I rushed to the Federation. We walked in there and everybody there, I remember Claude Valentier was there, who was a technical director, and Claude says, yeah, yeah I know that happened, let's, let's find out. It was The one that had the letter was Joseph Vigo. Well, Joseph Vigo was nowhere to be found. Um, it was said that it was two guys from California that came in, they forged my name on a paper stating that I was not going to fight, and they placed some other people in California. That started a riff between those guys, California, two French, and myself. And uh, that's why there was a split for a long time between the Savant and California and Zusa. Well, nonetheless, years later, we find out who it was to Joseph Ludwigo, and who mentioned that the person that did that was Nicholas Sanyak. And, uh, you know, we talked to him and I told him that one day we'll have a nice little walk with destiny. And we let those go, keep on moving forward. Years later, you know, that, that happened in Laredo, Texas in 1999. Uh, when the Guigo basically told us everything was born on. And we talked to Patorel about that because I always thought that uh, he was very, he had held some type of resentment, which was never, was never the case. Nonetheless, let's continue talking about teaching. When you would talk to others about Patorel, they would always say the same thing. Patorel is very cunning in the ring, very skillful in the ring. I'm showing a, a clip right now of uh, my professor with Marco Necontini from Italy, who is one of the pioneers in Boca and Cesar in Italy. And you can see the way he moves. He was very sly, he was very meticulous, but he was very precise. He would egg you on for you to get hit. He was a very smart competitor, very smart fighter. I put him in the category of who can we compare with here in the States in boxing. Probably Oscar De La Hoya, Willie Pep, Oscar De La Hoya type fighter in between that type of combination. Um, as time progressed, you know, um, you have to understand that Patorel's background, he was a police officer. He was inside the anti-terrorist police, Rad. So a lot of his involvement in bringing into the environment of Savant was also that because it was a different type of, uh, of understanding of the techniques, which are very good. You know? During his tenure as a police officer, he developed a, a lot of self-defense practicalities from Savant going over. He incorporated uh, Savant alongside Don Fine. He, he developed the Don Fine method, which is practice how police officers carry, you know, that nightstick that's a pompa like and um, which is awesome. As time progressed in 90, 94, <clears throat> the, 
the International Guild was developed. We were all part of the Guild. And the reason the Guild was developed was because we received a letter from, again, from Michel Roger saying that the International Federation was not going to recognize anybody teaching Savat as a self-defense. You can only teach Savat as a sport. And with that being said, we kind of, several professors got together, but there being one of them, and Paul Viviani, Pierre Shang, Roger Lafon, uh, Doc Louis, um, Ander Germain, Mercadier. There were several. Many of us got together and we formed the guild. We started codifying everything that we saw in the practicalities from all the melding of all the different disciplines and concurrent disciplines, as well as the appendage disciplines of, of, of Savat, of the French martial arts, into one as, as the ranking goes up. Nothing changed, you know. You have to remember that Savat Boc Francaise is our sport. Lacan is our sport. But teaching-wise, you will learn Lacan as your progression in glove ranking, baton as well. Nothing changes instead of everything being separate. Over. Um, in 2001, uh, a professor came to Dorado. We were going to have a competition, which that's it had happened right after, how can I put it, 9-11 and um, 2002. And what happened was that all of our fighters in Savat started dwindling because a lot of them were, were involved in or were active in military. So we lost a lot. So I remember d during that, that time that we were, we were together, he, he says, you know, Dancer Savat is so big, so it's a big system. We need to teach something smaller. And that's where dancers, I mean, dancers survive and books the rule kind of became, um, which is great. You know, it's a great, it's a great system that he has, a great system because he brings a lot to the table. Not only is he a, a tremendous fighter, he's a tremendous professor. He's, he's uh, one that can teach you a lot and he brings the experience from the police into, into books the rule, which is a lot different especially with what they were trying to develop with in France with Savat defense. So his, his coming back into the picture lifted up the defense mechanisms of Savat again, which were being lost, which is A+. plus. Now, the, on, the other thing else I can, I can tell you about Patrel was that uh, every time that you moved or you you struck at him, it was like hitting your hand in a fan. Something was going to come out. Either he was going to hit your arm, he was going to hit your stomach, he was going to hit it. something was going to happen. So you learn very quickly to understand counters, coming from counters and learning how to ski and use your head within the fight. And uh, I'm very grateful that he was my professor. And I'm very grateful that uh, he's keeping alive so I know he's always been. And he gave us enough to pass forward to those that come in that we can still preach what he taught me. So I want you guys to continue asking questions, continue going forward. There's more to come. Uh, we started a tactics uh, Thursday, which is pretty, pretty good. We're touching base on a lot of different things and what you can do and what you can't do. And, uh, it's, uh, it's you all that make the channel. And remember, keep on asking questions. My uh, email is buitronacademy2012 at gmail.com. And uh, peace. Secret of Laredo, Buitron Academy, 956-401-4868, Savat.biz.